Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for September 30th, 2015. This message is part of a series entitled Grace Based Success, where all year we have been learning how to win in life, how to do it God's way by his unearned and amazing grace. This is the year of great grace, and we've been learning about the grace of God and how the grace of God is available for us, to us, so that we can experience divine success, so that we can experience grace-based success down here in the earth. So the title of today's message is The Grace to Face Opposition. This message is for people who are facing something this morning, and I am sure that that's a lot of you, right? So you're facing opposition. Why? And we'll learn today that, that many times your divine purpose attracts opposition. We've been studying the life of the Apostle Peter. Our study of his life brought us to Matthew chapter 14, and we've been doing this, uh, looking at Matthew 14 for weeks now, almost a month, I guess. And we studied Peter walking on water and we dissected that story, you know, every way from Sunday. Right. So um, so we're going back to that story today because I read something yesterday uh, uh, that happened when Jesus got back into got in the boat with Peter and the other disciples that I didn't really focus in on yesterday. So this is what I read yesterday. And after Peter and Jesus were in the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you are really the son of God. And yesterday I was focused on observation versus experience and how the disciples in the boat. Yeah, they came to know Jesus as the son of God through observation. But Peter came to know him through experience. Right. And that was yesterday's focus. But let me read that again. And I want to focus on something else. The beginning of that portion says after Peter and Jesus were in the boat, the wind stopped. So the wind didn't stop until Jesus got in the boat with them. Now, remember the context. Jesus sent his disciples out ahead of him. Jesus told the disciples, hey, hey, guys, get in the boat. You guys go out ahead of me. I'm going over here to pray. And he went and he prayed and he spent hours in prayer with the father. And while he was praying, the disciples were out there on the water and the wind was so strong that the wind was turning up the waves and the waves were beating against the boat. And these were time tested fishermen that were dealing with these wind, with the wind and with the waves. And, and, and then they dealt with it for hours. The Bible says that Jesus didn't catch up to them until the fourth watch of the night, which is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. So so they've been out there for hours battling the wind, battling the waves, and the wind did not stop until Jesus got into the boat with them. That's what I really want to focus in on today is that the wind didn't stop until Jesus got into the boat with them. You have the grace to face opposition. What does this mean to you today? I have seven things to share with you. So let's get into them. Number one, many times you are in the center of God's will doing exactly what he told you to do and you still face opposition. So don't take the fact that you are facing opposition as an automatic indication that you are outside of the will of God. See, the disciples were out there doing only what Jesus told them to do, and they were facing opposition. See, strong opposition actually might be an indication that you are in the center of God's will. They were doing what Jesus told them to do, and the opposition came. I believe the opposition came because they were doing what Jesus told them to do. Number two, divine purpose often attracts opposition. The good news is that the opposition of the enemy can't stop the purpose of God. So, so when you are doing the will of God, when you are walking out your divine purpose, many times it is your divine assignment. It is your divine purpose that will attract the opposition of the enemy. Number three, when you receive instructions from God and you are walking them out by faith, opposition comes to see if you will give up before your assignment is complete. In other words, opposition comes to prove your resolve, to see if your faith can stand against the storms of life. Do you have faith that is going to falter when the storms come, or do you have faith that is going to stand? Having done all, to stand some more and to keep standing until you see the manifestation of God's promise. Number four, you are not going to accomplish your divine assignment in this world without facing opposition. In 2 Timothy 3 and 12, Paul said, everyone who wants to live a godly life will suffer persecution. If you want to live a godly life, if you want to live a life that is upright before God, you will suffer. You will face opposition. You will suffer persecution. There will be opposition that comes to you because of your divine assignment. Number five, you can't accomplish anything of significance 
in this world without a fighting spirit. Every person God has used mightily, look at it. I mean, study the Bible. Every person God has ever used mightily, people who were anointed by God to impact this world, to leave a mark that, that could not be erased. These were people who had to overcome pressures and attacks and opposition of the enemy. They had to overcome some stuff. And you, as a believer, if you are going to accomplish anything of significance in this world, you have to have a fighting spirit. You have to have a spirit that says, I will not give up, cave in or quit. God is on me and in me and with me and for me. And I cannot lose. I shall not lose. I shall never give up. Number six, your desire to do what God told you to do must be greater than your desire for comfort. Are you willing to pay the, the, the cost involved in becoming the person God called you to be? These people were out there doing the will of God and they were facing all types of opposition and it happened while Jesus was there. It happened while, after Jesus was gone and, and, and it, that's how it happens with us. You, there is a cost associated with becoming the person that God called you to be. And yes, you can just say, I don't, man, forget it. I ain't doing all that. And you can just go sit on the couch somewhere and not accomplish anything. And yeah, you can have earthly comfort, but you are not going to leave a, 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 a major impact in this world. You are not going to make the impact that God called and destined and designed and desired for you to make. And so if you are going to leave a mark in this world that's not going to be erased, then you are going to have to face some stuff and overcome it. But here's the good news. God has already given you the grace. That leads me to number seven. God has already, already, past tense, already given you the grace for the victory. He is not going to give it to you. He already gave it to you. You have the grace to face whatever you are facing. And the only way you can lose is if you quit. If you don't quit, you can't lose. If you it, Listen, if the battle, if it looks like you're not winning, then the battle is not over. The only way you can lose is if you quit. As a believer, God has called us to be, to be overcomers. 1 John 5 and 4 says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You have to live every day with the spirit of an overcomer. But how can you be an overcomer if you never have anything to come over? You are facing stuff and you are an overcomer. So just come over it because the grace of God is already on you for the victory. Jesus sent them out. Jesus knew they were going to face opposition, but he never expected them to quit. They didn't quit and neither should you. So speak this over your life. Speak this from a believing heart. Speak this in faith. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and also my requirement to live by faith. You made plans for me before the world began. You made those plans by your grace and you then gave me the grace to go do what you planned. Your grace is already on me and in me for divine success. You have already planned the impact I will make in this world. You have already prepared me for my divine assignment. I now use my faith to access your grace. I live by faith in relentless pursuit of my divine purpose. Before I die, I will arrive at your final destination for my life and I will make kingdom impact along the way. My purpose may attract opposition. If it does, that's okay. Because the same grace that is on me for my divine purpose is also on me to overcome every challenge. I am not moved by challenges. I'm not moved by opposition. I'm not moved by the pressures of this world. I am only moved by you. I will accomplish what you have graced me to accomplish and nothing shall stop me because stopping me would mean stopping you and you cannot be stopped. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right-hand side of the website. Sign up. You get the messages. There will be a blessing to you as you head into this day. Listen, if you know this message is a blessing to you and you know somebody that needs it, share it with them. Just remember, as you head into this day, you might be facing something, but God has already given you the grace to face opposition. Don't look at it. Don't ask God for the victory. Approach God from the position of victory because the victory is already yours. God bless you.